Okay, my friends, uh, I'm going to make an extraordinary claim, but it's true. We need to create W and Z bosons, which are, you see the giga electron volts, 80 giga electron volts is created from one electron volt of electron neutrino. These decay into this if you can do the, it correctly, and we have done it. We have forced them to separate, and when you separate these charges, you increase the energy potential exponentially, free energy within a couple of weeks, if I'm right, and I think I'm right. Okay, my friends, I know this is another shocker, but if you stick with me, I think you will be shocked. Muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos become muons and electron showers. Well, what is a muon neutrino and an electron neutrino? A muon neutrino is a little black ball attached to a white ball, which is the electron neutrino. They're looking for mu muons now. They never realized that black ball existed. Now, when these two particles attach together, smash into another medium, and we made it crash into itself, they will separate literally into a black ball and showers of white electrons. And at that point, they become W and Z bosons, which is free energy. And we can have it within a couple of weeks. Now, I said they were a black ball and a white ball. Well, these are, t each one of these is an electron. This is an electron, that's an electron. All they are is a positive and a negative charge, which we always knew, like a bar magnet, there's always been a positive and a negative. They always say an electron is just a negative. Well, you can only make that happen for an instant, and then they come back together with a vengeance. And that's where we harvest the energy. I'll show you that in a second. This is what's called a photon. It's light. It goes through the air. It bounces because it has two particles together. If there was only one electron, and they collect in the air, it's called static and lightning and electricity, all that stuff. It goes right to ground and it will incorporate into whatever it hits. So that's the difference. This, this is a stable particle that bounces. An electron is just a very invasive particle. Now, so I just told you about the muon is the black ball, the electron neutrino is the white ball. When they concuss, they create showers, the white one. The black one does nothing, and I'll show you that right now. All right, you saw the light coming in, which was the black and white balls attached together. They explode here and fall apart. The black balls completely separate, 100% separated, as the white forces its way through here and creates what's called tau, and then it also creates what's called W and Z bosons. Now, I'm not sure which ones you want to call W and a Z, but they, when they attract back together and smash back together, the energy is absolutely phenomenal. And that's why you see this is hardly glowing at all. When you see this, that's a, just a gigantic increase in energy. We did nothing to increase this energy other than to put a venturi, which is nothing more than a, an, a, a, a restriction. It's like a hose. It came in there and uh, it crushed all those parts, made them go crazy. And when they did, they literally separated. Now, there's a little techniques to this. Rodney's the guy. You have to get a hold of me, and I get a hold of Rodney. We don't do a whole lot of interactions, but he's, he's very good at what he does, and he's sort of a quiet guy. But you get a hold of me, and we'll work together. And he'll be, I'm sure he's, he wants to do this. But he has no funding. He has no way to do anything. Somebody's going to have to step forward. If we want free energy, somebody's going to have to step up and say, let's take a look at this. Because if this is the W and the Z boson, which I'm almost certain it is, we started with light. Light is light. That was the photons. The photons separated. Exactly what CERN says. Muons, electron showers, exactly identical. Neutrinos, exactly identical. Then they look for the W and Z bosons, which they, they, they just have no idea how to f figure that out now. And here they are. And if I'm right, that gives us thousands of times more, at least hundreds more than what you started with. Therefore, it's free if you can harvest it. 
All right, these are red electrons. I mean, uh, photons. One half of them is an electron, so there's two electrons together. That makes them fairly stable. They bounce. That's what light does. Electricity, one of them only, will burn you. It'll, it'll incorporate into you and kill you if there's enough of them hitting you at the same time. Now, light is different. It bounces. Now, when it comes over here through the air very fast and crashes into the venturi, the particles actually separate as I th show them you or I will show you. Okay, so we saw the box of particles and here's where they separate. The black ball disassociates from the white. The white creates the showers just like CERN says. I, I agree with that. And the black ball is a muon, goes on its own way. I agree with that. Now, they are not extremely black and powerful here. But over here, when they come back, they snap in very, very hard. And that is where your energy value is, in between here and where they reconcuss. So we need to put an absorber in there to take that energy before it just dissipates itself into, you know, splashing into the black particles. What would we harvest? We would take the increased value from this to this, which is hundreds of hundreds of times because there's no input value to this this is nothing more than a venturi therefore it's free to convert that to this if we convert this to that we have increased this 200 times when it becomes that when we can put a harvester in here we can harvest that back you know we'll lose some of it but we should be able to get at least 20 30 percent 30 times more than the input value the stronger the input value, the more this dark, I mean, this, this heavy-duty energy will be here, and we will be able to suck it off. These are those W and Z bosons. This is where the energy comes. Let me show you where they come back together over here. I showed you where they concuss and separate. Where do you see where they come back together? Hold on a second. Don't forget, this is how they start out, black and white, black and white. And then when they slam into the venturi, these everything separates, just falls apart. Now, when and Sir knows this, they they've seen this. Now, I don't know how he got these images, but boy, I'll tell you, this is just amazing. Look, when they came back together, remember all those black particles started to move in. Well, here's one of them that was ex is this is where they initially snapped back together. That's an increase of uh, unbelievable increase in, in the energy potential, slamming back into this, I, I think it's dark matter. Now, up here you can see they're also dipoles, and they are in less of a state of, of concussion. But you can see the, the dark particle seems to be the, the dominator. I, I don't know that for a fact, but the dark particle seems to be more you know, even though it's just attractive, it seems to be so attractive that it accelerates these particles so intensely that we're going to get a, a ton of extra energy. Now, what we have to do is get between that. We've got to get between that. And that's when it comes through that venturi. The other side is the W and the Z bosons, and we put a plate in behind there, and somehow a harvester, like you know, a solar panel-looking thing, and we take it away before it slams back into the black. Free energy within a couple of weeks, if this is correct. Now I want to make one last statement. Don't quote me about the Bohr model. It can't work because Bohr said this, or we got quarks or that, and so forth. Because nothing exists more than these particles right here. That's the smallest particles, and everything is made of these electrons. Two of them make a photon. That's light. When you start piling them up in big masses, you end up having what we call protons. But that's only 1,839 of these electrons in a mass, like a little ball of particles, just like this. All right? And every one of these is an electron. It has a positive and a negative. And there's, there's some work to do on the theory yet. But I believe if you take the mass of an electron and you divide it into the mass of a proton, you end up with 
1839 and 1840 makes a neutron and that is one atomic mass unit. 1839 is just one electron smaller than one atomic mass unit. If you go a couple of electrons either way, you have what they call isotopes. They say, oh, they're, they're just charged particles. What is the charge? They have an extra electron. <laughs> That's all it is. Every electron is not just a, a, an electron negative explosive particle, which is energy and so forth. It also has the dark particle, which is the muon gravity and it's also dark matter I believe. I showed this and there they are right there. So if anybody, and I'm, this is not my first rodeo here. I realized this when I was first out of the army. I was 1968. I did this, I did this stuff in, I was, I'm not going to go over and brag about it, but I, why not? <laughs> There was nothing I didn't do in the electronic and the chemistry and the semiconductor as far as understanding what was being done because I had to. I was in that realm anyway. But I'm, what I'm getting at is I'm showing you something that has validity here. I'm not just a, a guy making outrageous claims. Which they're outrageous. Yes, absolutely. If we can have free energy in a couple of weeks, I'd say that's an outrageous claim. If it was true, I'd say it's pretty damn good. So if you're interested, that's right there, roger at mudfossils.com. Now, other people send me pictures of all kinds of rocks and things because I'm also into that. And if you want to send them there, that's fine. I'll try to comment if I can. But, you know, I, I'm really, really busy. But this is what my focus is now. We need free energy. All right? I love you all.